Okay, today, uh, the question was focusing on TLR9 and the TLR9 yet to be cell. So I'll get to that. I just want to start with a, with, um, a general overview that we know there's two types of uh, transitional B cells. There's one type of B cell that has high TLR7 or TLR7 responses, and another one that has uh, seems to be a TLR9 response. And the question has been, TLR7 um, is sort of like the pathogenic one, and in fact, TLR9 is thought to counteract TLR7. So, but but we want to, we found TLR9 associated with BAF and so forth. So we want to study. We want to know. We want to know what the pathogenic feature of TLR9 B cells are. Let me skip to the human stuff because TLR9 B cells have been uh, found to produce antichromatin antibodies, uh, and that's sort of consistent with uh, Dwight Cohen's result that beta knockout mice and beta knockout mice have antichromatin. So there is a disease relationship. TLR9 signaling in human B cells also produces a unique set of uh, interferon genes. Uh, and somewhat unique responses. But TLR7, on the other hand, uh, might be more susceptible to anti-DNA antibodies and renal disease, and this is from human B cells. So there, there is some reason to think that they're both pathogenic. So let's start one by one. First off, we know in, there's endogenous interferon beta produced, let's say it's even uh, constitutively produced by B cells, in some B cells, these B cells, the TLR7 not necessarily these. And uh, when you think about it for a second, that's constitutive production. Why is there constitutive production? We don't know. But I drew up here the, uh, the antigen that stimulates TLR7, and it's double-stranded RNA. So right away, there's a difference here. Maybe that does it, or maybe they, they respond to that, or maybe they amplifies it. But you can see there's a different kind of response, double-stranded RNA versus single-stranded DNA uh, CPG, in fact, is the stimulus for TLR9. So we got these different stimuli. We got the different TLR7 and 9. This is interferon beta positive. You know, we spent to talking about it. They have the um, autocrine interferon beta production response. It promotes a long-lasting response. Now, one other thing about TLR7, or it produces a, a, a strong response. TLR7 in humans has been shown to produce a different set of interferon beta, but it also produces a different kinetics. The kinetics of a TLR7 B cell, you stimulate them, I guess we're not sure of it double single RNA, but maybe double, maybe CL264, uh, will respond more, but contrary. You know, the response won't be persistent. And, uh, but, which is what you want in a, in a viral response, because some of these ones like produce viral genes, but you don't want a prolonged response versus the TLR9 response, CPG, in humans produces a, a slower but sustained response. Well, you know, one thing is you can see that they don't have any receptor on these. These are the interferon beta lower and receptor lower. So maybe that's how it provides sustained, is you know down regulation mechanism. So all this is talking about the cells, the responses, what might drive them. Um, <clears throat> downstream from here, we know the TLR7 uh, B cells, uh, the TLR7 reactive B cells, also enter into, maybe they stimulate T cells because they, they, they previously showed these are the cluster 2, which has CD68, CD69, and CD86 pi. They have, like I said, unique interferon signatures. Now, when you get the interferon signatures of these, let's say double-stranded RNA, let's say that's a virus, response type of cell. By the way, I drew this over here because I think it's not just B cells, but it actually is, um, you know, like parenchymal cells, like parasites might do the same thing. They can be respond one way or the other depending on um, what they do. For example, you get a virus and a parasite, they want to make this response. Uh, so the other way to look at this is the programs that are turned on by this B cell. These are the antiproliferative, antiviral, or immunomodulatory pro uh, programs. That's these B cells. So they have all these things and finally end up making anti-DNA. These B cells are uh, different in that they are low affinity. That's what I've read this diagram right here is. Uh, they produce uh, longer, slower responses, different sets of interferon, 
many different sets of autoantibody in the case of these cells like anthrochromatin. And they have different uh, that they have different responses. You know, there's there's the other model where you have low, too much, and high interferon, and uh, you know, an in, in interferon beta deficient state is like maybe like this. They don't have much interferon. They don't respond. They are more. Uh, they respond more to gas elements, uh, and uh, they are more inflammatory, chronic inflammation. They don't downmodulate. Interferon gamma is high. In the case of rheumatoid arthritis, for example, uh, RA patients who have high levels of interferon, that would be over here, the beta interferon, are less likely to respond to TNF therapy versus these people, the typical, I would say typical RA, interferon gamma, long-term chronic inflammatory responses, they might actually respond to TNF therapy. So TLR9 might have a role there. This might be, have a role in renal disease, or frequent disease, because that's where chronic inflammation damage can occur. So this is yet a, another way to look at it, is what response elements are downstream from the interferon receptor. If this is low affinity, then you get this low affinity interaction between the interferon receptor 1 and 2, jet 1, type 2, signaling to the stats, different, different balances of stats, lead to weak signaling leads to gas, Strong signaling leads to this interferon signaling response genes, and that's over here. These are the, these are the strong interferon response genes. Mostly you think of antiviral. So all these things come into play. The endogenous production of interferon versus not. The receptor having high affinity signaling versus not. The receptor uh, being driven or amplified through TLR7 versus TLR9. So as you can see, that, that's how that comes in the different types of the engines that stimulate them, the different the different spectrum of interferons, probably higher affinity, like interferon beta, but others, versus lower affinity, and the different responses of things like, uh, we think, beta receptor. So <clears throat> this doesn't need much more survival signal, I would, I would think. This is at least true in mass. That this one is you know barely activated, and it doesn't need beta, whereas this one, is less activated and may need um, more of it. So, um, so there's lots of lots of ways to view the role of you know, this is all about TLR9 uh, relative signaling in a, in a B cell. Okay, that's about it.